Hey everyone, tonight I want to do a quick review on the LotMax SC10 Shark 3D printer. Uh, the particular one I have does come with the automatic, automatic bed leveling sensor. It also comes with the dual color printing. As you can see, there's an axis here. Sorry, an extruder. And then there's an extruder down there as well. One cool feature about these is that they both do include filament runout sensors. So if you are mid-print and you run out of filament, you get snagged or something and breaks and it stops coming through, what's going to happen is the print will go ahead and it will pause itself and it will lift up the print head and move it over to the origin point back here uh, until you can redo the filament, replace the filament, sorry, and then go ahead and get your, um, your print restarted again. So this particular one, it has a 235 by 235 millimeter print area. I know it says 250 by 250, but according to the actual specs of the machine, the print area itself is 235 by 235 uh, by 265 millimeters on the Z axis. Okay. So I'm doing this slowly here. I know this is a big no-no, but I'm doing this real slowly so we don't cause any issues. I want to show you guys some ports and everything. So on the front of this machine, you can see there's a port here for the auto bed leveler. And there's a port over here. And this is to connect the second, um, the second extruder, filament extruder, and the second filament runout sensor. This one right here, this is an opening for the laser. Uh, I do not have the laser add-on myself, um, but if I did, the ABL would come off right here and the laser would get replaced on it. All right. Another cool thing about this is you can see this is a two in one out hot end system. So that means um, you know it has two different extruders that are going into the one hot end, and that's how it switches colors. Uh, when you're when you're doing any kind of dual color printing, um, you can set up what's called a prime tower, and the prime tower every time it needs to switch colors, what it'll do is you will see it uh, pull filament out of one. And if you take a real close look, you can see where the green filament ended right there. This is about where it pulled out to my mind. It'll place it with the other. And then it comes down here and it purges some of that uh, new filament. It purges enough of it out so we're sure that when it comes back to the actual model, uh, it's, it's printing the right color. So one cool thing about this that a lot of printers don't have, and this may be a little hard to tell, but underneath here, there's actually one, two, three, uh, part cooling fans. So rather than rather than how uh, some of them like Creality or G Tech, they'll have like one single fan over here with a tiny little scoop that comes down and blows uh, the air a little bit. This has three of them blowing much more air directly on it from three different positions. So that's going to give you better bridging uh, if you need to print like you know tower and then there's two towers. You need to like connect them without supports in the middle. That's going to let you do that a little bit better. All right. Let's see, then down here, we have our micro SD port. This is where we put our card if we're going to print from the card. USB port, um, and then you also have, this is actually an HDMI port, which is different than pretty much any other printer I've seen uh, that connects to its own touchscreen up here. As far as the touchscreen goes, it works well enough, however, um, Something that I want people to be aware of is, at least on my particular machine, this uh, HDMI port right here, it's been very touchy. And, I, and I'll wait towards the end of the review to kind of show you guys what I mean, because it's been enough to mess with my screen here and I don't want it to affect this at the moment. But we'll come back, there is an issue with this I want to address. Again, that's with my particular printer. I don't know if this is a problem across all of them or not. So this is what you come into when you start out. You can see you have print control settings. I'm not gonna go through all this, um, but the ones I really wanna to touch on. If you go to control here, you have your option to preheat the hot end or the bed. Um, something that I found a little annoying with this, and it's not, it's not a deal breaker for me, it's just silly in my opinion. Um, you actually have to press every time you want that to increment. You can see you can't hold it doesn't do anything when you hold it again you know just a silly little thing on my end that I thought was an annoyance 
Um, you can change that to go from one degree at a time, five degrees, up to 10 degrees at a time. I did notice too, when you switch up here between the uh, extruder, if you want to, uh, I'm sorry, the hot end, uh, if you want to preheat all that stuff, when you're at the bed, if you try to preheat PLA or ABS for the bed, it will actually kick it down to zero as if it's not getting any temperature at all. Uh, I'm sure that this is a very quick software setting from Lotmax's end uh, that they could change, but since they don't have their firmware open source at this point, it's not something that the community or I can, can change at this point. All right, you do have the ability here to kind of mess around um, with your printer head and move it manually. Zero, if you've ever done 3D printing before, you may be used to seeing auto home. Um, zero and auto home are effectively the same thing. For, his, for this, you can do the X axis, you can home the Y axis, or you can home the Z axis, or you can press this to home them all, which we'll do now. So you can see it's, or here it's next to silent. All right. So these have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, TMC 2208 silent stepper drivers in them. That's going to mean that you can have this thing printing at night. Um, and it's not really going to be an issue for the most part. I'm going to take a second and I'm going to stop talking. The fan is really about the, the loudest spot. We're going to see if you guys can hear anything. It's no worse than, than a computer fan, uh, like a desktop. So it, it can be, if that's enough of an annoyance for you, if a computer fan's enough of an annoyance, then you may want to put this in a different room but I don't think it's super loud compared to other ones that I've played with. Uh, one thing I will recommend, come down here, turn this off, otherwise you have to deal with this beeping, which I'm not a super big fan of. And I don't know if you can tell too, but if you notice, it does this animation every time you press something where it essentially has to reload the entire screen and it does make things pretty slow. If I had my option, I don't need any of that animation, just flip it over to the next one. This is all just a big waste of my time. You can play around with the extrusion a little bit, extrude out what you need here. Uh, and mine actually comes with the auto bed leveling. So if I press this, then this probe goes around and it does a grid of nine points, uh, three, three rows, three columns for a total of nine. And then it lets you adjust the actual Z offset, which is how close the printer head is to the bed. So that's really useful for fine tuning um, the print quality as you go through and you do these. Now, I do have a complaint with this. Compared to what I'm used to with like a vanilla Marlin on my other 3D printers, and I can add this to the video here a little bit later, what I can do is right in the middle of a print, I can eyeball and I can say, okay, you know what? I see that I'm a little too far away. I need to squish the plastic down a little bit more. So on mine, I can just come over here and change the Pro -Z off, probe Z offset uh, by baby steps, tiny, tiny, you know, fractions of a millimeter to really dial in the quality of that first layer and the subsequent layers. I can't do that with this machine right now. That's honestly one of my biggest gripes at the moment. The software overall for this 3D printer, it, it's okay. Um, if you are somebody, I guess I should preface this by saying, if you are somebody who is new to 3D printing, you're gonna really like this printer for the most part. It's gonna check most of the boxes that you're looking for and it is relatively easy to start and get up and running and really you know, get into. If you're somebody who likes to tinker, um, you're really not gonna be a fan of this particular printer. And I've, I've found myself with frustrations here uh, as well, again, with things like not being able to manually change that offset um the z offset here so i can squish things a little bit more bring it up a little bit more whatever the case may be but there's really no open source nature to it like there is uh with creality and some of the other printers out there that's not to say any one is better than the other again it really comes down to personal preference uh, but at the end of the day i would personally like to see it open source so i can tinker around um, with things a little bit more myself all right, continuing on with the review here, I went ahead and I started printing one of the stock model files uh, that came with this particular printer. And I did go ahead and pick one of the dual color ones. Um, pretty neat thing that I did like about this is that when you load it up, it actually gives you an idea of what the 
completed model is going to look like. Uh, I'm going to take a second here and let you guys listen in just to know how silent this machine is. So if you hear anything, it's probably just the fans. Um, with a lot of other printers that don't have silent stepper drivers, you, you would just be, you would hear this thing going wah, 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 and it would probably drive you nuts. But overall, this one's pretty quiet. It's definitely a good, a good thing to have. All right, so looking at this a little bit more, you can get a little bit of an idea uh, in terms of how far along the print is. We just started with 1%, six minutes in, the bed is at 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, the hot end is at 201. And the current Z height is 0.3 millimeters high. You can pause it, you can stop it. Go in the control here a little bit. You can make adjustments to the temperature, the fan, the extrusion, and the speed. So if I go into speed and I actually bump this up to 150% speed, Give it a second to catch up, and we'll see how it does. So it's moving pretty quickly there, and as you can hear, it's still silent aside from the fans. So good progress. Oh, I mentioned this earlier. So this is the start of that uh, prime tower. All right, so we're doing a switch right now. All right, the print is now done. Uh, as you can see, it turned out pretty good. Got a little bit of salmon skin here on the side of the green one, but overall, this came out pretty nice. As you can see again, this is that uh, that prime tower. It's kind of what it looks like when it's all done. Um, I forgot to mention this initially, but this is a magnetic build plate, and it kind of seems like this is a sort of built tech surface that you might see on some of the Creality printers. Um, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but this plate here will flex. I, I normally do this with two hands, but it's kind of hard holding the phone. But this plate flexes, and you can see it kind of starts to pop off there. Put my phone down for a second, I apologize. Got it all off, there you go. Little guy right there. It's not completely perfect, but um, like I said before, if this is your first 3D printer, this is actually a very, very nice one. Uh, if you're somebody who likes to tinker, this may not be the printer for you. Again, it is a bit locked down in terms of firmware, uh, at least so far. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's got a lot of really great features right out of the gate, dual printing is awesome. Um, Having the filament runout sensors is great. Having the all metal dual gear extruders is great. I think I did neglect to mention that initially, but it does have these dual gear all metal extruders. A lot better than some of the plastic ones that come on some of the cheaper machines. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helped you guys out. Hopefully you guys can make an informed decision. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. I'm happy to help. Thanks so much for watching.